He says, the problem with teachers is, what's a kid gonna learn from someone who decided his best option in life was to become a teacher? <laughs> he reminds the other dinner guests that it's true what they say about teachers, that those who can do, those who can't teach. <laughs> I decide to bite my tongue instead of his and resist the urge to remind the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers. Because we're eating after all and this is polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher, Justice. Be honest. What do you make? And I wish he hadn't done that. Ask me to be honest because, you see, I have a policy about honesty and ass-kicking, and that is if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. You want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a CO plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor, and I can make an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best. You want to know what I make? I make kids sit through study hall in absolute silence. No, you cannot work in groups. No, you can't ask a question, so put your why would I let you go to the bathroom? Because you're bored and you don't really have to go now, do you? You want to know what I make? I make parents tremble in fear when I call home at around dinner time. Hi, this is Mr. Lopez. I hope I haven't called at a bad time. I just wanted to talk to you about something your son did today. He said, leave the kid alone. I still cry sometimes, don't you? And it was the noblest act of courage that I have ever seen. I make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I make kids question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write, write, write. And then I make them read. I make them spell definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful over and over again until they will never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all of their work in math and then hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them realize that if you got this, then you follow this. And if someone tries to judge you based on what you make, you give them this. Let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. I make a goddamn difference. Now, what about you? The piece that you just heard was called What Teachers Make by Taylor Molly. He is a famous spoken word educational activist that rose out of the slam movement. It was after hearing this poem that I began to fall in love with spoken word poetry and began to write my own. I have always been impressed when people have the courage to go in front of a crowd and captivate and engage them through performance. Like many others who write, I found it therapeutic. It was a stress reliever and became a way for me to organize complex ideas. I learned how to become a resource to myself. I believe that we are our own greatest resources. Our experiences, our ability to think and connect to our voice are the most beautiful and universal power sources to us. And when we can correlate that with education and infuse the ability for a student to utilize themselves and their creativity to communicate a deeper understanding through performance, then you are enriching that student's life forever. Standardized tests and worksheets will only get us so far in the way of showcasing comprehension. However, performance-based poetry allows us to dig deeper, allows us to take it beyond the simple response to a question allows us to invest our thoughts and our feelings about a situation, subject matter, emotion, or a person. It allows us to communicate all of those elements of our original voice, all while building our skills as a writer, speaker, listener, and reader. Simply put, spoken word performance poetry should be incorporated into the classroom as an effective method to assess student understanding. The communication of students' learning has often been one-dimensional. As Paulo Fieri expresses in Pedagogy of the Oppressed, 
America has assessed its students' comprehension on a traditional banking concept of education, in which teachers are the sole form of knowledge and the students are dispensed information and asked to regurgitate it on a test. Students often learn stage to stage, complete a worksheet, quietly answer the questions, and then turn in the sheet to receive credit. Diane Ravitch further elaborates on this issue in her work of The Death and Life of the Great American School System and how No Child Left Behind has created a culture of accountability based on test scores. This system of assessing student understanding through standardized tests has been further continued through Common Core. Thankfully, passionate educators are mobilizing together to help change this. An example of this is the Connecticut Social Studies Frameworks. The Connecticut Social Studies Frameworks are pushing students towards demonstrating their knowledge through informed research and action. Spoken word performance is this form of action that allows for students to communicate their understanding in an authentic way. I am incredibly fascinated with spoken word poetry. There are so many great things that are being done with it to bring education alive, especially within history. One of the most recent fascinations I've had with this is Lin-Manuel Miranda and his recent creation of the Broadway play Hamilton. Lin-Manuel brings a unique twist to the story of revolution through hip-hop, music, and spoken word that it is incredibly ingenious. Here's a brief clip from his work. Let's check it out. When Lin-Manuel Miranda sings about the drive of the young, scrappy, and hungry immigrant, he's not singing about just any immigrant. I am the A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. We are meant to be a colony that runs independently. Meanwhile, Britain keeps on us endlessly. He's singing about the man on the $10 bill, Alexander Hamilton, the revolutionary, visionary, and youngest of the Founding Fathers. This is a guy who, on the strength of his writing, pulled himself from poverty into the revolution that helped create our nation and caught beef with every other Founding Father. I mean, there's great drama, there's a great love story. Lin-Manuel is a great example of demonstrating the mastery of knowledge through performance spoken word poetry. Spoken word is in the classroom will enhance education. We as educators must reclaim our profession and pose an alternative view to high stakes educational models. Poetry provides critical insight as to how infuse creative outlets with this educational process. As poetic educational scholar David Koval mentions, poetry is a liberating, conscious raising, politicized process that challenges young people to develop understandings of their world and begin to engage the world as agents of social change. Spoken word is rooted in literacy and oral traditions and requires an incredibly strong mastery of literacy skills that the Common Core is attempting to instill within every student. Poetry allows for issues of race, class, gender, and sexuality to be freely questioned and affirmed throughout the classroom and fully allow students to engage in meaningful inquiry about the world they live in. It allows for the discussion of activism on issues of women's rights, the prison industrial complex, racism, and student issues in their school and community. Effective curriculum is influenced by the folks we teach and poetry allows our students to become primary sources, constructing their own narrative. In this sense, Poetry becomes the catalyst in developing innovative ways for creating outlets for people and young people to get involved. Here are some tips of how to get students excited about performance poetry and how to incorporate it into the classroom from PowerPoetry.org. How to become a slam poet. Five steps, a lesson of transformation. Number one, do your homework. To know what makes a slam poet effective, you need to see it performed. Attend a poetry slam at a local coffee shop or a bookstore. Or if you're in Connecticut, come check out Young at Art as we host open mics every month and I DJ on the ones and twos in Manchester, Connecticut on Purnell Place. If you can't find one, head to YouTube.com.
type in slam poetry videos and you'll be amazed by the quality, quantity, and variety you'll find. Take notes on which slam poets you like best and then make an impression. Number two, write it all down. Take one memory and explore it. Don't leave anything out. Identify an event, person, or issue that evokes a passion in you. It could be a trip that changed your life, maybe someone you recently fell in love with or a breakup, or perhaps something that really funny that happened to you recently and you just want to share it with the world. Use your five senses to create a first draft. Write down what you see, hear, taste, touch, and smell when you think about your topic. Details are key when it comes to painting a vivid picture through slam poetry. So always ask yourself, could it be more specific? For instance, and instead of writing, I drank a glass of water, right? I sipped on an ice cold glass of water with a pinch of lemon that was so taut it made me cringe. Craft your words into short stanzas that lend themselves to a natural rhythm. And feel free to use rhyme if you'd like to use it. 3. Read out loud. Stand and practice. When editing, read your poem out loud. If you find yourself stumbling over certain lines that are clunky or too long, that's when you know it's a good section probably needs to be cut, changed, or maybe moved. It may be used to help out online. If you see a thesaurus, look up some synonyms and replace them with certain words. Four, read it out loud again. Five, add flavor, juice, power, movement, emotion. Add some drama. Remember, you're not just reading your poem out loud, you're performing. The goal is to get the audience to react, laugh, snap, cry, whatever it may be, to increase your score. So look for ways to increase the drama. Are there moments where you can whisper or shout Places where you can speed up or maybe slow down? Can you throw in a facial expression or bodily movement to illustrate your main message? So in conclusion, I would like to end with a poem that I wrote after hearing Taylor Molly. It is my first spoken word piece and it is called, What do you want to do after college? So he asked me, What do you want to do after college? I think, reflect, and besides that, uh, acquire some knowledge, but my Brain is only going to retain 10%. For something that's a right, shouldn't it cost no sense? It makes no sense. I respond, become an educator. Not going to the NBA or falling back on a fader. But he thinks education is a fallback profession. I can tell by the look on his facial expression. I use the opportunity to teach a lesson. I respond, what do you want to do after college? He goes straight to the money and skips the knowledge. I see a byproduct of a materialistic world, an eye that is caught by some hair and some twirls. He looks in my eye and says, you're a pretty cool guy. People that are educators, I respect. I think we deal with the issues that the world neglects, trying to speak Life while the pupils text, but the pupils seem to drift astray when I can't focus on what to say. It seems that both of our minds are just wandering away. I think to myself, our brains are just malleable clay. So I mold his mind as he molds mine. And I know his life isn't my business, and I should mind, but my mama said, kill him with kind. We were born with two ears and one mouth so that we may listen twice as much as we talk. So I sat and listened. And that is where the story would have been told. But in a world full of pebbles, be bold. Thank you.